The last, stop right there, please. So, this is the last thing about chapter 28, the determinants of saving. When we talk about saving, saving is that part of our disposable income that we didn't spend. It's our disposable income. And what is disposable income? We said the amount of money that is available for household that it, he or she can either spend or save. That is disposable income. So when it comes to savings, it means that disposable income that we have, we didn't spend it. That is what saving is about. I think it's clear. Mm -hmm. So, saving is defined as part of disposable income that is not consumed, which is not spent. Factors that affect spending will affect savings. So, all those factors that affect our spending will definitely affect our saving. Get the point here? Because it is based on disposable income. So, when we talk about factors that affect spending or savings, they are supposed to be the same. Because both of them are reliant on disposable income. Do you get what I'm saying or not? Yes. There's disposable income, which can either be spent or saved. So if we are not spending, it means we are saving. And if we are not saving, it means we are spending. So that means whatever factor that affects saving would definitely affect spending. For example, the, the interest rate. If interest rate increases, savings will definitely increase. If interest rate falls, savings will what? Will fall. Spending would increase. So that means interest rate would affect it. The composite of household can also affect it. Young people, old people, middle-aged people, how they spend, how they save is a factor and other factors. So, but that is not where we're going. We're going to marginal propensity to save. So what is our marginal propensity to save? We're talking about the fraction of an increase in the income that is not spent instead of, instead it was saved. So as soon as our income level increases, that fraction that we save rather than spending is our marginal propensity to save. Get it? As soon as our level of income increases, the fraction that has increased that we are not spending, that we want to save, is our marginal propensity to save, NPS. So what is the formula for NPS? It is the S, the Y. So the S is the change in savings divided by the Y, which is changing the level of income. As soon as we understand our NPS, we should be able to derive our APS. Our APS is the average propensity to save, which is savings divided by Income. Do we get that, please? Yes. So our APS, like I said, is savings divided by income. Then we have activity one. For this activity, they said we have the calculation propensity to save. We are told to find, calculate uh, to three decimal places the NPS and the APS. So we have this year savings for this 7.5 billion disposable income for this year. So here, we can find our APS. We can't find our NPS because this is the first year. There's no changes in the first year. The first year is assumed to be constant. Do we get the point here? We can only find the APS for the first year because in that first year, that is the year that is constant. It is fixed. There's no changes. But changes start occurring from the second year. So here, we're going to find our APS to be savings divided by, savings divided by income, 7.5 divided by 100. 7.5 divided by 100 to three decimal places gives us this. Do we get it? Mm -hmm. Our APS, that's our APS for year one. APS for year two will be the same. 7.9 divided by 102. And that's all until year six for our APS. This divided by this, this divided by this, 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 divided by this gives us all our APS. But for our NPS, our marginal propensity to save, which is changes in savings divided by changes in income. So we need to check for year two, we start from year two because from year one, year one is a constant. It starts changing from year two. So in year two, we have a change, changes in our savings to 7.9. As soon as our disposable income increases from 100 to 102. So the formula for changes in savings will be, for marginal progressive to save for year two will be, year two savings minus year one savings divided by year one savings. Divided by year two income minus year one income divided by year one income. So year two savings. Is 7.9 divided by year one savings 7.5 divided by 7.5 divided by year two income 102 divided minus year one income 100 divided by 100. So that gives us 7.9 minus 7.5 divided by 7.5 divided by 100 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 divided by 